All right, so today we're going to look at the HubSpot API. Um, we're going to do a small task here, which is uh, we need to get recent deals um, from HubSpot. And then recent deals from HubSpot. And then with that information, we're going to filter it down to deals that just closed this month. And then we're going to look at who closed them and the values of those deals. Okay. And so if we hop over to HubSpot um, from the main developer docs here on the left side, you can come down to deals, deals API. You can read about them here. We want recently modified deals because um, if we're looking for deals that closed in this month, that means that their, their deal stage changed in this month. So that's why we want recently modified deals. And so this is going to want our API key. And then if we look at the query parameters here, you can see uh, count is how many we want. So we're going to want 100. Offsets for paging, which we don't really need. Um, sense is only deals modified after that certain timestamp. So that's going to be important. We only want deals modified after the beginning of this month. We don't care about recently deal, recent deals before this month. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So we're going to be making requests. So let's get a request library. So npm i uh, request and npm i request promise. Let's grab these two. Cool. And so we want const request equals, I can never spell it, equals request. Nope require request promise promise can't spell today okay so let's get recent deals so uh, we need to do our async await uh, main function body so async function self closing try catch console.log our error e so we're safe Okay, let's put our notes in here. So what are we going to do here? So we're going to get recent deals from HubSpot. We're going to filter to this uh, this month. And then we're going to uh, print who they are and then sum it up. Okay, so let's get recent deals. So await request and uh, it's going to be a method get. And then the URL is going to be HTTPS colon double slash. Uh, api.hubapi.com um, I'm going to turn let's here let's go to HubSpot let's grab this deal endpoint slash deals v1 boom modified awesome uh, I am going to make that an, a variable const endpoint equals that probably in quotes const endpoint equals npeng wow yeah Cool. Okay, let's turn this into template literals. Boom, boom, boom. And then uh, let's do some curly braces. Okay, endpoint. There we go. So that's the endpoint. Uh, to, to actually make the call, you need to pass it the HubSpot API, which you can get from your settings page. Uh, with request, it's the query string. So it's HAPI or uh, happy key. Um, for me, mine is actually in you know, another file. So const private equals require dot slash private and so mine is called private dot hubspot api key and then count is going to be a hundred and sense uh this is a date thing and let's just confirm what the date is it says we need x must be a unix formatted timestamp in milliseconds okay so anything date related we need moment js for so uh, npm i moment and then up at the top const, really misspell that one, const moment equals require moment. Okay. Then sense. So we want to do moment dot, we don't want now, which this would be, we want this beginning of the month since we're talking about this month only. So start of month to get a Unix timestamp, use the Unix function. Now this is in seconds. And HubSpot said they wanted it in milliseconds, so we have to times by a thousand to get seconds to milliseconds. Okay, and then we need to set JSON to true so that the headers are set correctly. JSON to true. Okay, so that's going to be const um, deals equals. And then I actually have a function here called. Uh, Let's see, const, I think I've misspelled that every single time. Mask deals, 
equals private dot mask deals. This is just going to hide some of the information in there so that I can show you the output. Let's take a look at the output. Uh, boom. Let's see. How did we do? Uh, node index. Const endpoint needs an equal sign. Boom. Let's try it again. Hey, there we go. Okay, so these are all the deals. Awesome. Let's look at one deal in particular since uh, all this is collapsed. So let's look at masked deals zero. Undefined. And that's because it's masked deals dot results. Okay, so here's one deal. It's a lot of stuff in it, but the point of it is that you can see uh, it's got a portal, a deal, associated, um, and then all these properties. And this is where HubSpot really comes into play. So properties has, a lot of these are, some of these are custom. Some of them are belongs to HubSpot. So notes less updated. Deal name, for example, is one we're going to look at. Amount of the deal. Close date. These are all important. Um, created date. Uh, another one that's important to us. HubSpot owner ID is important. And then... There's a custom one. Deal stage is important. Onboarding. That's that's a, one of the important ones we care about for this task. Okay. Anyway, so we got our HubSpot data. So now what we need to do is filter to this month. So uh, let's see. We want to masked deals dot filter, and we're gonna filter deal. So we don't just want this month. We want deals that are currently in the deal stage of onboarding. So we want to say return deal.properties.dealstage.value, dot dot uh, actually. If we look back at here, it's, it's the properties and then the property name and then value is where the actual value of the thing is. So deal stage down here is deal stage. So deal.properties.dealstage.value is actually the value we're looking for. So a little bit convoluted, but deal that properties deal stage that value equals onboarding. Uh, let's say const onboarding deals. Let's take a look at that for a second. Console.log that. Man, I cannot spell today. All right, let's take a look at that. Uh, Masked deals dot filter. That's because it's masked deals dot results dot filter. Can't forget that. Okay, so here's these deals that are all in that. Now, if we look back at inside a deal stage, you can see there's a timestamp, and that's when this value came to be. So we actually want not just that the deal stage is set to onboarding, but also that it was set to onboarding in this month. So we care that this timestamp is greater than. To de or really greater than the beginning of this month. So not only do we care about that, but we also care about deal.prop, and now I'm writing this twice, so I'm going to say const p equals, uh, actually I'll just say stage is that. So now I'm going to say that and stage.timestamp. So we want the timestamp to be greater than uh, basically this thing, which is the beginning of the month in Unix. Um, I don't want to write this twice, so let's actually come up here and say const um, start of month equals that, and let's replace that, and now we can use it here. Cool, so this is going to give us deals that are in the stage of onboarding that were changed in this month. Awesome. And let's see what happens. Cool, and there are, I don't know how many there are, so let's just do a dot length since there's all these extra properties. Three, perfect. So those are all the deals in this month. Great. Um, let's map over this. You saw that how many there was like a ton of properties, right? We don't need all those properties. We just want a few. So we're gonna say um, onboarding deals dot map deal. Uh, let's see here. What do we want to map? Um, we want to look at. We want to return like a new sort of a new object here. Um, we can do it in. Uh, we could write this and return an object. There's another way to do this, which is return, doing an implicit multi-line return. So instead of that, you actually wrap this in parens like this. And this now becomes the object we're returning. Okay, And so we want to return name 
deal dot properties dot let's see it was called deal name dot value and then we wanted amount which is deal dot property you know what Meh, it's fine whatever I was gonna shorten this but it's fine all right amount uh, dot value and then we want setup fee deal dot properties dot um, it's called onboarding dot value and then date um, it's the close date so deal dot deal dot properties dot uh, close date dot value but this is in this is not in a format we want to read so let's let's print it out first before I pass it in a moment because I don't know what type it is all right so it's date and then owner um, so if we look at the HubSpot owner, actually here, let's, let's just say deal that properties dot HubSpot owner, or it's called HubSpot owner ID dot value. Okay. Uh, let's just say const mapped equals. Okay. So let's log this out for a second. Let's see what we get. So we're just making a friendlier object. Cannot read property value of undefined. So I happen to know that um, that's on line 35. I happen to know that one of these doesn't have onboarding. So we actually need to say, if deal that property is not onboarding, then deal that property is not value, otherwise zero. There we go. Okay. So here's our three things, which is great. Notice the owner though is a number and the date is a timestamp. So and it and it's a string timestamp even more. So to get the date right, we actually have to pass it into moment. Uh, there's our dates. So now we need to fix this owner thing. So how do we get the names of the owners? Um, I don't want this object to have just these. So we're gonna use we're gonna make another HubSpot API call to the owners API to get an index of them. But since we're gonna be making a call to this again. Let's make this HubSpot thing its own function, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna resize this so we get a bit more code to show here. Okay, so let's make a function called like const HubSpot equals, and it's gonna be an async function. And we're gonna have it. Uh, let's just we're gonna make this a utility. So we're gonna have it pass a method which we're gonna default to get, and then we're gonna pass it an endpoint and then uh, a, a potential uh, body post um, for post params. Okay, and inside of here, we're gonna do this await business, um, but we're not gonna pass in here yet. We're gonna pass in, we're gonna say const options equals that object, uh, and Good, and then we're gonna say if we have a body, if body, then options dot body equals body. So that way we can pass in post parameters if needed. Um, and yeah, pass in options. So we don't need that here because it's gonna be in the body instead. And then, cool. So now we should, instead of this, we should be able to say, uh, we should be able to say await HubSpot. And this is a get call. And we want to pass it to our endpoint, which, yeah, I'm just going to pass it. We have two endpoints now, so I'm not going to make this a variable up here anymore now that it's a variable inside of our function. So I'm just going to pass it that. And then I'm going to pass it these query params, just the two that were different for us, like that. And I'm going to get rid of this. So now our usage is just a small usage, and we're using this uh, function, which is nice. And actually, I don't want to define functions inside of this other main functions. This can come out here. Okay, and is this returning? No, it's not returning. So we can just return. And of course, um, we need to, let's see, actually want to do const res equals that, and then I actually want to return um, private dot mask res. That way we're doing that at least. 
Cool. So I think that's all we want for that HubSpot utility. Let's just give it a shot and make sure nothing changed. Good, nothing changed. So now that we have a HubSpot utility, uh, we can use it again. In the start of our business here, we're going to get uh, get deal or sorry, get owners. And so we're going to say um, HubSpot, and we're going to do a get call to let's look at the API owners API get owners. So slash owners v2 owners. And of course, we're going to const owners equals await. There we go. And let's take a look at owners. Uh, we have our owners, so we can console.log owners. And I'm going to comment the rest of this out just so we can make sure we're only looking at this one thing. And there's a lot of stuff here. So we actually want to just, we actually want a, a dictionary. And so we want to we want a new object keyed by owner ID, so we can then grab like the first name. Now you could write a function in a reduce to do this, but there's actually a really cool utility built into Lodash for this. So I'm going to actually npm i Lodash, and then uh, const underscore equals require Lodash, and then in here we can actually just say. Uh, we can actually just say uh, const, um, let's actually change this to uh, HubSpot owners, because I want that other variable, owners equals underscore dot key by, it's called. And you, you pass it the array you want and the key you want to key by, and in which case, we want to key by um, owner ID. And so now look at the object, owners. Yep, oh, I just installed Lodash again. There we go. So now we're keyed by these owner IDs, which means that this is now like a dictionary. We can look up who it was. So let's comment this all back in. And now down here, instead of doing this, we can actually just say um, owners uh, square bracket because we're looking up that value. And then we can pick whatever we want. So we can do first name. So now if we look at our mapped object, you can see now we have an owner of the actual name. And so there we go. There's a really nice, neat uh, object of deals who closed this month.